Alright, um, I'll uh, take you for the installation of the ST duplicator. Um, no doubt you've uh, just downloaded the um, actual file itself, which is uh, ST duplicator.py file. Uh, this is a Python script. Uh, if you just open it inside of uh, your favorite text editor, and uh, you'll just notice uh, just before this big long set of uh, hashes, and uh, there's just some installation instructions. I left it as a um, as a py file, just so if you, you know, make any changes or so, yeah, uh, it is available. Um, or you can also just uh, leave me a message and uh, you know if you've got any ideas in regards to things that you might want to see improved or so forth, or any bugs that you come across. Um, so in order to run it, uh, first of all, you need to copy this into your Maya scripts directory. So uh, I'll be using Windows 7 to uh, do this installation, but it's, it's quite a generic sort of process. Um, generally, whenever you install uh, Maya, it, um, like most people install to a default location. And if that's the case, then like if you're especially using Windows, um, it'll always be like uh, the username, documents, Maya 2014, or whichever version of Maya that you're using. Um, and then this just scripts directory. Uh, once you've done that, then it's just a matter of running these two lines over here, uh, just inside of your script editor. And uh, that pretty much is uh, all you need to do to get the script up and running. So let's uh, get things underway. Let's close it down. Okay, so I'll just copy, copy that. And I'll go to my documents, admire. Um, and as I said, once again, this is whichever version of Maya that you're using. In this case, I'll be using 2014. And then you just get to your scripts directory and just uh, paste inside of there. So here we have it, it's the stduplicator.py file. So if I just double click on that, and um, as mentioned, you just need to copy these two lines here and um, paste those into Maya and just get the script under, underway. So I'll close it down now and just open up Maya. Okay, so here we have my open. Um, so now it's just a matter of uh, getting this script loaded in. A few ways that you can do it, you can. Um, as I mentioned, you can open up your, your duplicator script and just copy these lines one by one and throw it into the uh, Python command line. Um, just a little note, you'll notice down here it may say mail to start off with. But if you click on it, you can bring up the, the Python command line. Um, the ideal place to do it generally is uh, just your script editor. Uh, you can find that by the right, uh, by either clicking on uh, this uh, button down here, which opens up your script editor, or alternatively, you can go to Windows and General Editors, and then just down to the script editor over here. Uh, once your script editor opens up, you'll be presented with a um, like maybe a couple of tabs. By default, uh, it may once again just be on a mail tab, so you may just want to click onto your Python tab and just make sure it's a nice uh, clean window. Uh, alternatively, you can just right click inside of uh, this portion um, and just um, click on new tab and just go uh, Python. So it opens you a nice clean tab, and then it's just a matter of uh, pasting those two lines in. Um, as per this, and then just pressing uh, enter just on your number keypad will uh, run the script. And you can see it's, it's opened it up. Um, generally, what I like to do is um, not do that. Uh, generally, what I like to do is just to uh, click on file and save the actual script itself to the shelf. Uh, so, quite often, it's, it's kind of good to maybe use your custom tab. Um, so I'll just go file, save, save script to shelf, and I'll just name the add uh, the button that I'm wanting on the shelf. So in this case, I'll call it duplicator. And as you can see, the, uh, the duplicator button's been added to the shelf. So now all I need to do is just click on that, and it'll put it up. So that's really handy, especially when you're going to use something quite often, or you know. Um, yeah, down the line, or yeah, it's it's it's, it's nice and tidy. Okay, so I bet you're wondering what does the duplicator do? 
Yeah, that's not a good question, but uh, <laughs> what it actually does do is it, uh, it takes an object, like this for instance, you enter an x, y, and z value, so in this case I'll be, uh, click on my main object, click select object to duplicate, so that enters into the script, and then I just uh, set up an x, y, and z uh, values, so I want it to be, in this case I'm just going to say 10 units long, uh, by five units high, so that'll give me 50 squares, and then I want it to maybe three objects back, so that'll give me 150 objects. So it'd be 10 times five times three, and um, you you notice this uh, little spacing text box, and basically what that text box is made up for is just to add some sort of spacing in between the objects. So if I if I put like one for instance, and I execute the script. Let's see that's is one unit of spacing in between. By default, the script set up to um, create just one um, one unit of spacing. So, so if I delete that, and, uh, run this, and execute that, you'll see that it spits it all up. Okay, so. Um, Quite often, especially if you're doing uh, dynamic simulations and, and so forth, um, I always find it handy just to add just a little bit of spacing in between. Um, and then when you run that, it's you know you got something that's beautifully set up to run sort of simulation or so. As um, you know, you got no objects that are penetrating. Um, the way that this script works is that it's, it leaves your master object behind. So the object that you've selected to be duplicated, um, it isn't deleted or trash it or anything. It leaves it, and I mean once well once it's uh, run through the script, it reselects that object for you, so you can decide if you want to delete it or do whatever you wish to it. So um, once it's done that, it it also creates a um, a master group, and inside that master group is just uh, all your objects that you've uh, duplicated. So it's really really handy, you know, to keep things nice and clean. So it's a nice clean scene. And of course, you can grab your master group and just move it around and uh, do whatever you need to do. So it's yeah, as I said, quite tidy. Uh, one of the other things that the uh, the duplicator script does is that it always centers on the uh, main master object. So um, so you can pretty much just throw this object anywhere you want, sort of thing. And whenever you you run your duplication. Um, it'll always be centered on that. So just just a nice handy little feature. Um, one of the other good things about the duplicator itself is that it's um, it has just a few of the uh, custom sort of um, options that um, Autodesk is giving you basically, um, and I've just included those just uh, so you got you know the full functionality. Of uh, duplicating objects, so you can select, say, for instance, uh, whenever you create an object from scratch. So let's see, uh, sphere. And I click on that. You know, you see it's got the construction history. So if I want to keep uh, my input history when I duplicate normally, so I'm gonna create this. Oops, uh, create this like so. so main object. And the script. So, um, by, by default, when you, whenever you, you do the, these sort of things, um, when you duplicate an object, you, you lose its construction history. So, I click on that and just go to Control D. You see that my construction history has been lost. So, I can't change the amount of edge loops and all that easily. Um, so, one of the options that I have uh, uh, given you or uh, left available to you is just the input history. So, if you want to you know, keep your uh, all the inputs, so you can change how many um, how many subdivisions you want, whether you want less or more, or so forth. You know, like and depending on how you've, you know you've created your object, you know, there's um, from time to time it's quite handy just to keep that construction history. So you do have the option to keep your input history. Um, one of the other really handy things is uh, just instancing. Uh, another 
uh, feature from Autodesk, which is very, very useful, especially when it comes to duplicating objects. So, so if I create this array, maybe I'll make it uh, 10 wide by 1 high, and maybe just uh, 10 by 10, or maybe we'll make it 15, so it looks a bit more fancy. Let's make it uh, quite tight, and we'll uh, put the instancing on, and we'll uh, execute the script. Oops, click the object on the script. Let's uh, uh, trace that formula for the moment. And so if I click on any you know, one of these objects that have been duplicated, because it's got instancing, you'll notice that as soon as I stick the vertice or do anything that'll change one of them, it um, automatically selects the vertices for all the objects in the same position. So say we create some sort of crazy shape or something, and it's nice and fast. Really, really handy feature. Uh, really, really useful. And uh, yeah, instancing, always recommend that when you can. Just because it's you know it's a faster way of processing um, a mass amount of objects is there is only the one shape node. So uh, for instance, if I click on all of these objects, you'll see uh, P cube shape one, P cube shape one, P cube shape one. So yeah, it just processes it all faster. Um, some of the other cool things that you can do with the scripts is, um, and it works really, really well with uh, the uh, ST randomizer script. So, um, recommend that you uh, purchase this guy because this guy does some fantastic things with it. For instance, uh, so if I create all these objects here, do that, and so if I just want to randomize all these objects in whatever way. I can uh, just select, say, the translation of, say, um, y, and I can set a, like a value, so 5, 20, yeah, just execute that, and it just randomizes it nicely for me, or I can set it to be a real small value for, uh, you know, certain effects and that, so I run that again, and you can see it's slightly offset, so, you know, maybe a Wanted some sort of uh, offset floor also, you know, real real fast and handy. Uh, so absolutely recommend it with the uh, the randomizer. You can't get wrong with that. So you can also set keys, which is quite cool. And if I set it to zero, refresh. Oops, let's get that. Oops. Let's, uh, let's turn that visibility back on. Um, and so, so if I go to maybe, maybe translate Y, set a key, and let's just execute that, so all flats, set a keyframe, go to 20, set a keyframe of 10 maybe, 5, execute that, whoops, and let's keyframe that, straight away you get just some sort of nice animation. So I absolutely recommend uh, getting the randomizer with it. Um, but yeah, duplicator, fantastic tool for doing doing arrays, for running, uh, running dynamic simulations. Um, yeah, really, really good. And I, I can show you a quick, uh, quick uh, dynamic simulation test, just, just to show you how fast it is, just to set something like that up. You know, a few clicks and away you're going, simulating. Okay, so it's just uh, do a quick simulation running that. So if I try to play plane, go to, I'll, I'll use bullet for the simulations. It's just, just a nice fast um, um, for running these sort of uh, simulations. Oh, we'll our solder. Uh, create some active rigid bodies. So we've got a floor, a couple of rigid bodies that are going to be active. And let's just uh, run that. And you can see quite a cool like a little effect and how fast was that to set up absolutely crazy so absolutely recommend getting the uh, duplicator getting the randomizer which works in conjunction with it um and yeah that's uh, pretty much how she works hope you have fun and uh, create some amazing 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 effects okay signing off see you later